Good day, everyone. In this research, we did a pilot study using rice straw as fuel for paddy drying. This research is a collaboration between the International Rice Research Institute and the Department of Chemical Engineering, UPLD. Rice straw contributes a big portion in agricultural biomass volume, given that for every ton of rice paddy produced, around one ton of straw is also produced. The most common rice straw waste management options are open field burning and soil incorporation. But both methods disregard the energy value of rice straw. And open field burning releases pollutant gases and haze, while soil incorporation also has its disadvantages. An alternative option is to use rice straw as fuel in paddy drying. A paddy flatbed dryer is a widely used design due to its simplicity and ease in fabrication. The dryer works by forcing hot air consisting of a mixture of flue gas and ambient air into the grain bed. The picture shows a paddy flatbed dryer and a downdraft furnace. In furnace performance studies, high thermal efficiency or drying air efficiency is better as it implies high energy recovery from the fuel and fewer emissions due to incomplete combustion. These are the most relevant literature related to this study. In summary, this study showed soil emissions from the common methods, drying air efficiency of a drum draft furnace but using rice husk, not rice straw, and LCA studies on rice straw-based electricity generation and biogas generation. In this study, a small-scale paddy dryer simulator using hot gases from a downdraft straw furnace was used to investigate whether the proposed alternative option is preferable in terms of energy balance and GHG emissions compared to open field burning and soil incorporation. And this is important due to the following reasons. Valorization of rice straws fuel for heat generation in a small-scale setup may be beneficial to avoid open field burning and to provide a low-cost solution for paddy drying. It is essential to find the optimum conditions in a controlled system which gives the highest efficiency and target temperature increase at the lower, lowest emissions possible. As most furnace performance studies are on rice husk, few to none have been found using rice straw as feedstock for small-scale heat generation. And lastly, LCA provides a more meaningful comparison for the different alternatives of rice straw waste management concerning energy and sustainability. For the interest of time, this presentation was shortened, but the details of this study can be found in these two publications. For the methodology, the steps are rice straw was collected and characterized. The higher heating value and lower heating values of the samples were obtained. For the furnace oper operation, rice straw was fed manually at the desired feed rate. Hot air temperature, percent relative humidity, and emissions were measured inside the dryer plenum. And ambient conditions were also monitored. A full two-level factorial experiment was implemented to screen significant factors. And the factors were rice straw type, uh, whether built or loose, straw feed rate between 10 to 30 kilograms per hour, and drying airflow rate between 2.1 and 4.1 meter cubes per uh, meter cube per kilogram. The responses were drying air efficiency, increase in drying air temperature or delta temperature, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen oxides or NOx. The drying air efficiency was calculated using the equation shown. Then the levels of the significant variables were adjusted and optimized via a response surface methodology or RSM design experiment using the software design expert. The validated statistical models obtained from the RSM uh, design experiments were then used in numerical, numerical optimization with the following goals. And the results were uh, experimentally validated. Part 2 of the methodology is the life cycle assessment. The optimized results from the experiments were used in the input-output energy analysis and GHG emissions balance. The system boundaries are shown in the figure. 
data on rice production, collection, transportation were gathered from various references. The software SimaPro was used for the energy balance and GHG emissions data. And the following values were obtained. Net energy, energy ratio, percent net energy, and net GHG emissions. Moving on to the results and discussion, the higher heating value of the samples were comparable to rice husk. The two-level factorial experiment showed that out of the three variables or factors tested, only two factors, rice straw feed rate and drying air flow rate, had significant effects on drying air efficiency. A direct linear relationship between the drying air flow rate and uh, drying air efficiency can be seen in the 3D surface plot, while a maximum value was found within the range of the straw feed rate, as shown in the figure. Increasing the straw feed rate from 20 to 30 kilograms per hour increases the drying air efficiency, but further increase in the straw feed rate results in a decreasing drying air efficiency, and this is possibly due to overfeeding. The optimum conditions found for straw feed rate, straw feed rate was 20.67 kg per hour, the drying air flow rate was 3.03 m3 per second, and this resulted in a drying air efficiency of 86.1%, furnace heat output of 231.47 MJ per hour, and increase in the drying air temperature of 18.41 degrees Celsius. This efficiency value is comparable with the results of a downdraft furnace using rice husk as feedstock and at 82.8%. In the input-output energy analysis, the highest input energy was during the heat generation stage at an average of 92% of the total input energy and at an average of 68% of the total GHG emissions as shown in the figure. And the results can be attributed to the blower electricity consumption during the heat generation stage which required the highest input energy and emitted the highest GHG. The total net positive energy range between 3,000 to 348, 3,348 to 4,527 megajoules per megagram of rice straw, while the total net total GHG emissions range between negative 61 to 856 kilograms of carbon mon carbon dioxide equivalent per megagram rice straw. Uh, where E in the negative sign of the lower range indicates a GHG avoidance instead of emissions. The total net energy ratio be was between 1.4 to 1.7 and the percent net energy uh, was between 39 to 67 percent. In conclusion, the optimized operating conditions and response values were determined as shown, and the net energy energy ratio, percent net energy, and the GHG emissions were determined as mentioned. And based on these results, the, the proposed alternative option provide, improves the net energy flow over soil incorporation and open field burning. And the best case of this alternative option offers a possibility of a net GHG avoidance in contrast with soil incorporation and open field burning. This ends my presentation. Thank you very much for listening.